The race to 5G is on, and the battle for talent is getting fierce. Welcome to 5G Talent Talk with Carrie Charles, a podcast dedicated to helping you face the future workforce head on. Navigate this challenging talent landscape with innovative strategies to attract, retain, and engage people in this new world of work. Only here on 5G Talent Talk with Carrie Charles, CEO of Broadstaff Talent Solutions. Hi, I'm Carrie Charles, and I want to welcome you to 5G Talent Talk today. My guest is Pat O'Hare. He's a good friend of mine, and he's also the Senior Vice President of Operations and Engineering at Zenfi. Pat, thanks for being on the show today. Thanks for having me, Carrie. Good to see you. I love your background. Oh, thank you. Talk about that. (laughs) Uh, It's just a picture of your typical manhole in New York City where we do a lot of our infrastructure work. So uh, I figured why not keep the the outside alive during... uh, during COVID lockdown. Yes, absolutely, I love it, I love it. So talk to me about ZenFi. Well, you know, ZenFi is a wireless infrastructure provider in the New York, New Jersey metro area, right? We have uh, fiber infrastructure, we do wireless siting and network edge co-location. We actually own and operate our own uh, purpose-built network edge colos Um, You know, we talk about the horizontal tower model as the model for our business. So, you know, our fiber infrastructure, you know, turns out to being the front hall fiber as if it was going um, up a tower, but instead it goes horizontally along the streets. And we provide wireless siting solutions on, you know, public infrastructure. We are a mobile uh, telecom franchise holder in New York City. And, you know, tops of poles, um, kiosks, any type of street furniture that we can bring fiber and, and wireless siting to, you know, we are the uh, underlying uh, network provider for Link NYC, the free public Wi-Fi um, uh, service in New York City. So let's talk about New York and New Jersey and the growth there. So what do you see is, uh, you know, the future of fiber and, um, you know, what role is that going to play in 5G deployment in New York City as well as New Jersey? Well, um, you know, without wires there is no wireless so uh, eventually everybody needs to know that wireless becomes wired somewhere so we're building a new type of fiber infrastructure where traditional networks were one of two things they're either highly dense or highly uh, accessible and those legacy networks just don't uh you know fit the new 5g infrastructure there needs to be highly accessible very dense fiber because of the uh, the density of the look of the siting for 5G. So we are using innovative cable assemblies, uh, putting in large count fiber cables all across the metro region and, you know, generally, you know, creating those network edge colos so that we can aggregate that traffic for our customers. So recently you had an expansion. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, um, you know, some kind of, you know, you would, some would call it explosive growth for, uh, for ZenFi. You know, we've won several contracts with uh, mobile carriers where, you know, we are doing large projects in both the New York and New Jersey uh, metro areas where we're building fiber and doing wireless siting. Uh, we just finished uh, or are finishing up two of those network edge colos that I, I spoke about earlier, one in Fairview, New Jersey, and one in Jersey City, New Jersey. And um, in New York City, we've uh, created two other hubs for one of our customers where we've pulled fiber in. And you know, we're, we're building out almost 90 miles of brand new fiber in New Jersey for another large project we have. So you know, all things considered, even during the pandemic, you know, ZenFi continues to grow uh, both steadily and some might say exponentially. Um, you know, we've brought on 10 new hires um, during the COVID lockdown. Uh, we're proud of the fact that our you know, sales team and our wireless solutions team continues to engage our customers and is able to win the deals that you know, keep that sustained growth going. So how do you feel? Uh, well, let's talk about COVID a little bit, a little bit further. Sure. Um, did you see that uh, you said you had an increase in hiring in 2021 so far, not a decrease. Um, any other, do you feel that, you know, that COVID and, you know, the need for connection is really fueling this growth, this explosive growth that you're having? I mean, what's fueling that? 
I think it's more of the the rollout of 5G as the uh, the mobile carriers start to ramp up their deployments. And again, you know, credit to the sales and wireless solutions teams here. You know that that fuels the operations team's growth is is winning those large projects. Um, you know, just two huge projects in New York and New Jersey that they've won. You know, coming into 2020 has you know steadily increased the need for the people in the operations and engineering team, and also laying the groundwork for 2021. What we have, you know, there's uh, going to be another reservation period for the New York City mobile. Uh, mobile telecom franchise so we have that and that's that's you know fueled our growth as well that let's we talk we about more infrastructure that's going right. to need to be acquired for right. the mobile carriers let's talk about 2021 a little bit i'm sure so many people are wondering um you know what does it look like what's ahead for us and is you know is it and i'm getting that question a lot from from you know our clients what do you see uh, what do you see coming? Are you bullish? Is it going to be flat, the same, busier, crazy? I think you'll have a slower growth, but there'll still be growth. And hopefully if we can come out of the, uh, the other side of the pandemic, either with um, a vaccine or uh, a slowing or, or a curtailing of this, where we can, we can get back to some of the, uh, you know, in-person collaboration that happens in a normal uh, operating environment. But the need for connectivity has just exacerbated the need for talent. Um, like I said, the, the mobile network uh, telecom franchise reservation period, that's gonna be the, need, the growth right there. Um, you know, if the New York City um, franchise has a reservation period, which we expect it will in the beginning of 2021, that's another project right there for all the, the, the franchise holders. The assets have to be split up between the, the franchise holders. So the, the carriers have to come and make deals with us. Got it. Got it. That's good news. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So now have you, uh, is your whole team working remote right now? My whole team is working remote. The last time that we were in the office was March 13th. So okay. What, what, as a leader, what have you done differently and how have you engaged a remote workforce? I mean, I, have you done anything interesting and, and fun that we can learn from? Well, you know, it's, you know, Zoom all day, Zoom all night, Zoom, 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 right? <laughs> um, so keeping the team engaged through, I, I, I mean, I think the, 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 the interaction is so important for the team and Zoom rooms and things like that are, are really helping out. Um, to, to stay engaged. Um, bringing people together on those Zooms, uh, you know, at the beginning it was, you know, how to have fun and games, but I think we've all settled into the fact that this is um, the normal operating environment is going to be engaging people via video conference. And, you know, we've embraced that. Um, it's kind of fueled some of the things that we were doing already with rolling out like Microsoft Teams and, you know, creating um, collaboration environments on Microsoft Teams. So I think it's given us a little bit of a shove towards trying new things. And when they work out, showing that they're increasing uh, the productivity, even though you can't be in the same space. Um, we did take advantage of the nice weather and being outdoors and still being able to socially distance my team having um, some tailgate meetings, which is exactly as it's described. Make believe you're going to a football game Take your chair out of the back, out of the trunk of your car, and let's sit around and you know bring a you know have an individually wrapped sandwich so nobody's touching anything of each other, and <laughs> you know sit around for a couple of hours and talk about work and and get your collaboration time in there. And it's you know even though socially distance, you're physically in that person's presence, and it it, it makes a little bit of a difference because you know no matter how big or small your workspace is, the you know the walls start closing in eventually if you don't get out and have some of that interaction. So we were fortunate that we've picked some, some opportunities to uh, get together in a socially distant manner and just at least see each other. And do some That's smart. Very smart. I love it. How do you feel that the workforce is going to change because of 5G? Are, are there going to be new skills that are needed or other types of skilled labor? What are your thoughts there? I don't know if necessarily there's going to need to be new types of skilled labor. You know, I, I think of telecommunications, wireless, and anything that, that those terms encompass. You know, this is still an industry where you can learn on the job. 
Um, there are some programs now where you can go to you know, college and get your telecommunications degree, but for the most part, the folks that are in this industry are you know, self-taught or, or they're trained uh, via on the job and it's experiential training. So I, I, I still think that the most important skills for anybody to be successful in this is be smart, have a sense of urgency, you know, be willing to learn and be willing to, ne to network with folks. Um, and you can be successful. And I think, you know, especially here at ZenFi, you know, with the entrepreneurs that, are, that founded both our, our team, uh, the ZenFi team proper and Cross River Fiber, who we merged with in 2018, you know, this is an environment where people are willing to take on new folks and teach them. And that's a real, that's a real important aspect of growing any team is, you know, you can bring on people with experience or you can bring on, um, you know, folks that have no experience, but you have to, as a manager, take that time out of your day, which, you know, you may think is really busy, but it's important to train those folks and then to let them, you know, let them, uh, you know, go on their own and give them some responsibility and course correct in that manner. It's, it's not, uh, you know, you don't want to bring people on just to you know, do work and check it and not spend the time to develop them. I mean, that's still a really important aspect of what we do. That's crucial, crucial. Training and development, I think, is, is something that many times we're too busy to do. And so many leaders, they want the plug and play. They want people to come just ready to work. And I, I agree with that. But at the same time, you've got to develop your workforce. Yeah, it's difficult. Everybody, everybody and every company has a certain type of culture. So if somebody is ready to plug and play at one company, it doesn't necessarily mean they're ready to plug and play. They may have the, the basis of RF engineering or outside plant or fiber engineering or, or, or node construction, but you might just have a different flavor of how you do that and, and right. the manners by which you execute that. So talk about culture at Zenfi. What is it like to work there? I mean, it's great. I've been here since the beginning. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, listen, we have really, really great, um, the founders of both companies, Cross River Fiber and Zenfi, very entrepreneurial. Um, we are all roll up your sleeves people. You, you can go on our website and look at the executive team and they don't act like executives. They work on a daily basis. They work alongside us. They have their own things that they're doing that they are responsible for, but they are responsible for things other than I tell people what to do. That's my job. Like that, nobody has that job here at ZenFi. So if you're, you know, still into rolling up your sleeves and getting to work and having your own responsibilities, giving people the opportunity to be accountable for themselves. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of, you know, check the checker or hand holding or, um, administrative folks, like everybody has responsibilities. And I think that's, that's rewarding for people who work here is that I'm responsible for this. I'm going to be held responsible for it. But we also have the confidence in you that, you know, we've hired you, we've tried to develop you, we work along with you, and we're going to, uh, you know, allow you to do your job. You know, what I think is, is just wonderful about your team, Pat, is the diversity. And I know we've talked about this a lot and, and we've staffed for you for years and uh, you know, you're definitely one of our favorite, favorite clients, but you have so many women on your team, but they're in non-traditional roles. And Zenfi also has women in leadership. I believe um, Victoria Lambert just won the, the top woman in network orchestration right at the Global Women uh, in Tech and Telco Awards. Correct. So, Talk about, you know, how have you achieved this diversity? Because it is something that many leaders, especially in tech and telecom, want to do and want to know how to do. Well, you know, I think it's, it's opening up the, um, the non-traditional roles to everybody, really, and picking the best person for the job, male or female. And I know that people say that, and it, but it's not really trite, you know, here it's, you know, who is the best person for the job and also giving people the opportunity in, in, in roles that, you know, may be more technical. And, um, you know, we have, you know, just on my team alone, we have 11 women. Um, you know, that's not, you know, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. It's just that those were the best people for the roles that interviewed for the jobs. Wow. What percentage is that, Pat, of your total team? Um, I have 
I, I don't know, I'm bad with math, but um, I have 11, <laughs> out, of 20, exactly. <laughs> 11 out of 25, take your calculator out. I don't know, it's a, a little less than half. That's, but that's great. You know, I have, you know, we have women in leadership on my team. You mentioned Victoria Lamberth. I mean, she's a champion of, of diversity here and, 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 and not only of, of gender diversity, but cultural diversity as well. We have, you know, people from many diverse backgrounds um, as well. But, you know, Victoria, um, you know, she, we're a small company, but we still have a Women of Zen 5 forum for the, uh, uh, you know, the, the women that work here to get together and talk about what's going on just so they know that they're supported. Um, and I think that's important. You know, there's a, a lot of companies out there. We want to be one of them that are supporting the growth of, of um, you know, women in the industry. Yes, yes. The other thing I think you do really well is create an environment for your contractors where they feel included and you keep them engaged. So tell me, how do you do this? And maybe you can give some tips as well to other leaders. I think we're very thoughtful about when we bring contractors on to the business. And really it's with the, the foresight of, I want to get a contractor in here and I want to continue to make sure that they feel like they're part of the team. They're not Joe contractor or Mary contractor. Like we include them in everything that we do. And the idea is that after a certain amount of time, we want them to become members of the team, full-time employees here at Zenfi. And again, you know, kudos to the sales and the wireless solutions team that we continue to win business that allows us to not um, necessarily just bring on a contractor for a project and the project's done and thank you so much. And if we get another project, like we've been able to have this steady growth where so far every contractor that's come on board after the appropriate amount of time and we continue to have the business to support them, we've turned into a full-time employee. So I think then our track record speaks for the, for itself in the industry where, and again, understandably, you know, in the wireless, um, you know, sector of telecom, it's been that way. There are a lot of people out there that they are contractors and they move from project to project and company to company. And, you know, more power to people. There are some people that enjoy doing that. And there are some that do that only because, you know, it's who's winning the deal today. We've been able to win enough deals to keep that steady influx of talent, develop it. And then, you know, we look at it, hey, we've invested six months in this person, teaching them the way that, to do this. Like, we should keep them on board. But again, that's all based on, you know, work that we, we need to continue to, to get. So. Right. So tell me a little bit about your, who you're hiring right now. You know, for those people who are listening that, that are really excited about Zenfi and say, gosh, I'd love to you know, want to uh, work there. What roles are you hiring for over the next, let's say, three to six months? I would just, uh, you know, continue to say, you know, exponential growth in 5G and small cells. I mean, right now we have over 5,000 wireless sites under contract with uh, options for more that'll take it up over 7,000. Um, you know, our projects in New Jersey are over 600 sites. Our projects in New York that we're currently working on are, are over 500 sites. So your typical project management coordinators, uh, construction management, outside plant managers, construction managers, those types of things. So anything wireless, anything wireless infrastructure, we're doing it right now. Um, you know, even even to the point where you know we're we're getting. You know, like I said, coming online in the next uh, month or so will be our second and third purpose-built, fully owned um, edge co-location facility. So, you know, we're now, you know, we're in the HVAC business and uh, the power distribution and, and meet me rooms, et cetera. So all the things that come along with the facility, you know, are in our network edge co-location. Well, congratulations on your growth. And, you know, most of all, the, the way that you've built your team and, you know, the type of company that you are, because many times when you grow and you're focused on, you know, the revenue and many times, you know, the, the focus is not on the people and the development of people and diversity. And it's, it's amazing to see a company like Zenfi who has it all. So congratulations, congratulations to you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Now, how can we reach you? What is your website? www.zenfi.com. That's easy. Hey, I can remember that. <laughs>
All right, Pat. Well, I sure do appreciate you coming on the show. It's been fun. And um, hopefully I'll be able to see, see you in person at some point soon. I'd love that. Back on the conference circuit. Let's hope. Sounds good. You take care. Have a good one. Thank you for listening to another informative episode of 5G Talent Talk, brought to you by RCR Wireless News, Telecom Careers, and Broadstaff Talent Solutions. As we advance into the future, we promise to bring you the resources you need to navigate this ever-changing landscape of 5G to help you attract, retain, and engage people in this new world of work. To access the show notes or leave a review, visit broadstaffglobal.com. Until next time.